thank you for joining us this morning. Today is Sunday, September the 24th, 2023, and it is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Nicole Grieve, and I'm the parish administrator at St. Paul's Point Edward and St. Bart Sarnia, and we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. So let us now take a moment to quiet our minds and quiet our hearts for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that has passed and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth, and ourselves in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works, and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 105, verses 1 to 6 and 37 to 45. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvellous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abram and his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light to the night season. They asked and quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and the water flowed, so the river ran dry in, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abram his servant. 
So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us into the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven, that we may survive our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Chapter 6. A reading from the Christian writings, taken from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer from doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for, for doing good, if suffering shall be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered from sins once, once for all, the, righteousness, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He will put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Philippians. For me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Jesus Christ when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in the Spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, 
Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received their usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Gathering our prayers together, we respond to the words, God of love, with, hear our prayer. Lord, Forgive our arrogance and closed minds. Open our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we will see with your eyes, feel with your heart, and act with your courage and compassion for the welfare of all those who are in need. God of love, hear our prayer. Redeeming Sustainer, visit your people and pour out your strength upon us that we may hurry to make you welcome not only in our concern for others, but by serving them generously and faithfully in your name. God of love, hear our prayer. God, our challenger, help us to confront all that makes for death and despair in our lives, our communities, and our world. May we never lose sight of the possibility of transformation and be continually surprised by people who believe the best of one another. God of love, 
hear our prayer. God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive these petitions of your people, that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. We pray for those in our communities. And here we offer your own prayers, either aloud or in the silence of your heart. God of love, hear our prayer. O oh God, wisdom of the universe, you bear the pain of your people. Grant us the gift of wisdom that we may discern your way and live justly and graciously amid struggles of this world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God lift up his countenance upon us and grant us peace. Amen.
May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.